But yeah, I called my parents and told them, hey, I'm not coming over for Thanksgiving. Is there supposed to be no audio, or is the game just... Cool. I think we already got a bug, and I'm not even... <laughs> I'm literally the opening cutscene. <laughs> Back in 2013, Michael Bean had an interview with Game Informer. This interview was actually for Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, but he also reflected on his experience while working on Aliens Colonial Marines. Michael Bean said that Aliens Colonial Marines seemed kind of passionless, and his work on the project wasn't fun at all. By the time Colonial Marines launched, it saw terrible reviews, a bunch of Gearbox employees fired, many lawsuits filed against both Gearbox and Sega, and numerous disgruntled actors. Hey everyone, as always Jarek here, and welcome! to arguably the most disappointing game of all time. Is it the worst game of all time? Probably not up front, but I do think there's an argument for it, and I'll have to explain the context for that argument to make sense. Before I do that, I need to thank today's sponsor. For those of you that watch me over on Twitch, this layout should look pretty familiar. But what if I don't want to play games here? What if I want to play games back there? Well, I can do that with Raid Shadow Legends. I'm sure you've heard of Raid Shadow Legends before, whether it's through supporting other YouTube channels or their 10 plus million downloads. If you haven't, then I would describe Raid Shadow Legends as a turn-based RPG featuring lots of loot set in a medieval time. Arguably, I would say the most notable thing about Raid Shadow Legends is the sheer amount of champions you can choose from. This gives you a near endless amount of choices even when it comes to just one raid. And speaking of the campaign, that is the fastest way to level up your champion after all, you get the most amount of experience in silver, as well as a few artifacts. But what about the future? Well, Raid Shadow Legends has an entire roadmap. They just released the Artifact Forge, where instead of grinding for these artifacts, you can craft them directly, as well as a new advanced quest system for some more loot. They're adding in some new champions, which is to always be expected of this game, but they're also developing something called the Doom Tower. So if you want a good time waste while you're sitting on the bus going to work, or laying in bed before sleep, this is not a bad option. If you want to check out Raid Shadow Legends for yourself, it is a free game. Check the link down below in the video information and in the pinned comment. New players get 10 mystery shards, 2 clan boss keys, 100,000 silver, and a new champion, Adjudicator. You'll find your extra rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. Once again, a huge thanks goes to Raid Shadow Legends. Sponsors like Raid are a huge help to content creators like myself. The story starts long before the game even launched five years before, back in 2008. According to a report, Gearbox had been moving people and resources off of the Colonial Marines project and onto their Borderlands and Duke Nukem Forever projects, while still collecting full payments from Sega as if they were working on the game. When Sega discovered this, they temporarily cancelled Aliens Colonial Marines, leading to a round of layoffs at Gearbox. As a result, Gearbox outsourced a significant portion of their work on Aliens Colonial Marines to compensate for their mismanagement. Again, this was five years before launch, and you can already see the way this is going. But back then, you would have had no idea. I still remember some of the trailers for this game, and they're still some of the best trailers I have ever seen. I know how bad this game is and that still makes me hyped. That is an amazing trailer. And the same thing can be said for the trailers they released that showed gameplay. Private, is there anyone else down there with you? This just looks downright amazing. They also had demos that they showed before that again looked fantastic. But once the full game was in the hands of the consumer, they quickly noticed that this was nothing like the demos they had shown in the past. Aliens can climb on the ceilings and the walls. It's all driven by sophisticated artificial intelligence. 
check this room out. Look at the detail. You really nerded out with things like the alien's technical manual. Wow, it looks so awesome. Power loaders, APCs. It's a real deal. And that is a quick taste of Aliens Colonial Marines. It's a section from Act 2 of the game. Hopefully we'll be showing you more of Aliens before too long. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, this clip of uh, gameplay demonstration. Two players apparently agreed with this, so much so that they filed a lawsuit against Sega, the publisher, and Gearbox, the game studio. This lawsuit claimed that Gearbox and Sega had falsely advertised their game by showing demos of trade shows that did not resemble the final product. Keep in mind, these demos said actual gameplay on them. They were supposed to feature graphical fidelity, artificial intelligence, and levels not featured in the final game. Apparently they had a strong enough case that Sega settled this lawsuit out of court for $1.25 million, although they denied any illegal behavior. Gearbox, on the other hand, being as amazing as they always are, filed a request to have claims dropped against them, stating that the company, as a software developer, did not have responsibilities for marketing decisions. Randy Pitchford also tacked on that the company supplemented Sega's development with its own money to help Sega finish the game, and that they had not received any royalties from its sales. Which is a little weird to say when you're taking money from Sega to put it into your own games. So, yeah. To say this game had a rocky start would be an understatement. People were immediately disappointed by how much of a failure this game was, and how much it didn't live up to what Gearbox said it was going to be. And since I already kind of touched on it, let's talk about the graphics, and how bad they are. As I mentioned, the demos that they had showed had so much better... everything. Animations were smoother and more expressive, aliens seemed to be significantly less stupid, but the thing that really stood out to me was the lighting. The lighting in the final game looks flat and just really bad, whereas the lighting in the demo looks dynamic. And if there's one place where lighting really matters, it's in an Aliens game! In general, this game just doesn't look good. The textures are flat and muddy and also have pop-in problems, the lighting seems outdated, animation seems stiff and last-gen, audio doesn't seem to make you feel immersed in any way whatsoever, nothing about the audio design stuck out, which is a bigger problem here because again, this is an Aliens game, and all of these problems were compounded and made even worse if you played them on console. Keep in mind, this game came out in 2013. 2013 was still Xbox 360 and PS3 time. As a reminder, that's two generations ago now, and the Xbox 360 is 15 years old. You're welcome. As I was saying, this game looks hideous on consoles. All the problems I already mentioned on the PC version are there, but to a bigger degree on console. Plus you get the added usual problems that you would have on the Xbox 360 and PS3. Resolution is sub 720p, frame rate is 30 FPS if you're lucky, there's terrible screen tearing. As a whole, the game was just a graphical mess. But to truly appreciate how bad this game looked, even on launch, we had to look at other games that also came out the same year. You might be saying, well of course it's 2020 now, so duh, a game in 2013 is going to look bad. But again, there are games that came out in 2013 that still hold up to this day. 2013 saw the release of Bioshock Infinite, saw the release of Metro Last Light, it saw Killzone Shadowfall, it saw the release of Battlefield 4, it saw Red Orchestra 2 Rising Storm, it saw Crisis 3, and it also saw the release of the wonderful Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. This means that Battlefield 3 came out years before Aliens Colonial Marines, and now you really can understand how bad this game looked on launch. This is not a case of, yeah, the game is old so it looks bad, this is a game where it looked outdated on launch. Moving on to the story, I actually don't want to talk about it too much, but what I do want to talk about is that for a moment, this game was going to be considered canon to the official Aliens timeline. That got retconned because the game is so awful. And no, I'm not kidding when I say that. The actual events of Aliens Colonial Marines are supposed to take place 17 months after Aliens. This is why Michael Bean was doing the voice for Corporal Hicks. And we can go back to that interview with Michael Bean. You see, Michael Bean almost quit doing voice acting for video games altogether because of Aliens Colonial Marines. As I mentioned earlier, in Michael Bean's own words, he said, I just didn't really have any fun and the Aliens Colonial Marines project seemed kind of passionless. I think in movies, television, and the gaming world, you get some people that are really, really passionate, and some people that are just going through the paces. They think that because they have a brand name, they're going to get a hit game or a hit movie out of it. And that certainly was the situation with Aliens Colonial Marines. In contrast, Michael Bean only had positive things to say about Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, which ended up being one of the best games of 2013 and of all time. When speaking about Blood Dragon's creative director, Dean Evans, Bean only had praise. Dean is such an interesting and creative presence. 
He has such high energy and high passion. One of the things that I really, really enjoy about working still in this business is finding people that have that kind of passion. He was talking to me about the game and the fact that it was an 80s throwback, and there would be a lot of lines that were Arnold Schwarzenegger-like, or Sylvester Stallone-like, or Bruce Willis, myself. Those kinds of lines, that kind of vibe, and the fact that it was going to be a throwback to the 80s was something that I thought was interesting. But really it was his passion, man. You just can't say no to him. Bean makes a really good point here. You can tell when a developer has passion behind their game, and that really showed in Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. It also showed that there was no passion behind Aliens Colonial Marines. Which blows my mind! You have the Aliens franchise! How are you not inspired? There's so much you can do! To make another better example of passion versus no passion, you don't have to look any further than the Pokemon franchise. You can see the passion in Gen 2, the experience you can get in that universe, in that creative environment to explore. All of that is almost gone in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Now I don't hate Pokemon Sword and Shield like a lot of people do, but it's pretty obvious that the passion has sort of just left that studio. Pokemon is there for a lot of money. Passionless games can still be enjoyable like Pokemon if they have a good formula that you're always going to find fun and there's some good artistic direction behind it. However, Aliens Colonial Marines didn't have a good formula. It had a very, very basic shooter formula to it. And this was the biggest takeaway I had from the game. Functionally, is it the worst game of all time? No. But the gameplay is so goddamn boring that I just wanted to have it done and get it out of the way. That was also why I didn't really care to talk about the story too much. Because the writing wasn't necessarily awful in the story, but without any sort of impact to the gameplay, it just feels like they're trying too hard, and that's not really the issue. The issue is that when you have actors acting serious in a situation where you're surrounded by Xenos that should be able to kill you, yet the Xenos are just dumb, with AI that doesn't stand out to be these murderous killers, it's real hard to take that seriously. You won't care about any of the characters, you won't care about the gameplay, you find yourself very bored and uninterested. Ignoring that I had an issue where every cutscene was literally quiet, I don't know why this happened, but apparently that's a bug. Like Michael Bean said about the game being passionless, the player is going to pick up on that and feel passionless about the game. But let's talk about the gameplay. It's an incredibly linear shooter without any mechanics that stand out as interesting or unique in any way whatsoever. The closest thing to a good thing about the game is the gunplay but even that lacks a punch that other games had. The recoil doesn't shake the screen, there's almost none at all for that matter, and all guns have an incredibly bad about a muzzle sway when you're aiming down sights. Why they thought this was a good idea? I don't know. Furthermore, something that bothers me about the pulse rifle is that the sound always sounds like it's firing in burst when you're firing it in fully automatic. And when you do shoot something, there's such a lack of impact that the guns don't feel powerful. Your interaction with the world is through your guns, and if your gun's interaction with the world is not satisfying, you already have a problem. But it goes a lot further than that. The AI is especially dumb. Now here's where I need to point out that the AI can be made better by literally changing one letter in the code. Nope, I'm not kidding you. This will make the AI less stupid. But by default, I played the game without any changes, so I could get the default experience I would get on launch. And even when you do change the AI, it's not going to make them incredibly intelligent either. In fact, these aliens are so dumb, you can basically ignore them. They're never really a threat. The real threat to you are the mercenaries. Not because they're smart and they outflank you, no. Not by any means. It's just because they have pinpoint accuracy with hitscan weapons and whittles your health down pretty quick. The few times they tried to change the gameplay, it failed horribly. For example, you have a boss against one of the larger Xenos with a power loader. This should be awesome! You saw this in the movies! Get hyped! Wow. This blows. This also includes the final boss, which is against the alien queen. You have to run around pulling a few levers and then you eject the bitch into space. Except for that doesn't happen anyway. The final boss was definitely made more for co-op. You're supposed to be sneaking around, but she always knows where you are, so it's kind of a problem. It really doesn't matter if you're crouching around or being as quiet as possible, she is going to know where you are. And speaking of co-op, 
This game tries to pull the alien vibe of being alone and being surrounded and hunted by these merciless killers, but it shows through even more in co-op how much this just isn't the case. Mad <laughs> Not a single f was given. <laughs> Try touching it. <laughs> okay, now we know what that does. I you can't just stop the dude. I thought that would be in yeah, whatever. Croc move! <laughs> Get out of the way! <laughs> wow, it doesn't seem to care, it just like ran away. <laughs> See look, it just kinda like looked and then ran off. <laughs> well, it just like doesn't care. You know something has gone wrong when you try to do horror and people laugh. In fact, let's compare it to Aliens games. Let's compare Aliens Colonial Marines to Alien vs Predator 2010. Holy shit. Are you seeing this, Captain? And Alien vs Predator 2010 wasn't even considered a great Aliens game. It was just considered good and people forgot about it in under a year. But in comparison to Colonial Marines, it looks like one of the best Aliens games you will ever see. And to follow up the failure of Aliens Colonial Marines, they released a prequel expansion. It was even worse. The one thing about Aliens Colonial Marines that kept my attention was the ability to swap to whatever weapon I wanted to use on the fly. And these were pretty interesting in design. They all looked like they fit in the Aliens universe. They weren't really that satisfying to use, but hey, it's something to vary the gameplay up a little bit. Yeah, this DLC took all of that away, and it made the game so much less enjoyable. It was already bad to begin with, but this just made it a boring, tedious, monotonous game to even look at. So yeah, I think this is where we can end this video. And Colonial Marines. Except for when you try to close the game, it automatically launches itself again. I don't know why. No one wants to play you. Please close, but wait, what about that question? Is this the worst game of all time? Well, I think just straight up, no, it's not. I mean, hell, the game I played last week, the 13 remake, is not even a functional game. However, given the context surrounding Aliens Colonial Marines, there's an argument for it being the worst game of all time. The other bad games are just bad games that don't function well. But this has the history of Aliens, the advertising lies, the potential to be one of the best games of all time. Not many games can really compete with the failure that is Aliens Colonial Marines. One of the only other games that comes to mind is Duke Nukem Forever, coincidentally another Gearbox game. So is it the worst? No, it's not Big Rigs, but it's kind of its own classification of the worst. I'm certainly going to be more disappointed about Aliens Colonial Marines than Big Rigs. So the answer to that question is no, but yes. So I guess that's where I will end this video. 
Huge thanks goes to my sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Check the link down below in the video information. It is free if you want to play it. And another huge thanks goes to everyone that kept me sane over on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Jarek for Game and Dragon if you want to hang out in the future. If you subscribe, you get to see my videos ahead of time. Once I beat Aliens, Colonial Marines at the end of last stream, I started ranking my favorite Pokemon from each generation and triggering my viewers with my opinion. So if you want to hang out and join and be involved in that sort of stuff in the future, consider giving a follow. Thanks to all of you guys that watched this video, and I'll see you next time.